Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to share with you Ark's easiest creatures that are actually still worth taming. And before we get into it, make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. In at number 5 is the Carb Enemies. Now these things are actually a great start if you want a very simple underwater tame. Yes, this thing is not going to put up a fight against most creatures that you'll find under the water, but just for some oil gathering or for some gathering of some silica pearls, these things are great as you do not even need to go into the ocean to get one of these things and they can be tamed with something as simple as a slingshot. I wouldn't recommend going as far to fists, a slingshot and a club maybe are a good shout but i'd probably say go for the slingshot as you want to keep a bit of range as in the earlier stages of the game the carb enemies can very easily kill you and the last thing you want is to end up with just broken bones and you just ending up dying when you're just trying to tame something so that you can gather oil and other resources that you find in the ocean also, for any PvP players out there that may be in my audience, these things are great for doing any kind of turret soaking, anything at all. Yes, you're not going to get something like Rider Protection like the Stego offers, but you're going to give yourself a window into turret soaking. And also, they are actually quite good for Noglin Tames as well, but that doesn't really matter for a PvP scenario. These things will give you great turret soaking performance as they have so much damage reduction and actually you'll probably notice that by how many rocks these things take from slingshots but they are definitely worthy soakers for you to bring on raids early on in at number four is the pteranodon the pteranodon is found everywhere on arc and it is pretty much accessible on every arc map minus genesis part one and aberration where flyers are simply banned even though you can find Pteranodons on Genesis Part 1, but you can't ride them unless you use a string of commands, which I'll not go into because console players do not have any kind of access to it. The Pteranodon can be found usually in beach areas. They usually tend to go near water areas, and they are tamed very simply with a very simple knockout tame, and you can bowler these things as well. So you can simply go to a Pteranodon once it's landed, bowler it and just whack it with a club. I wouldn't recommend a slingshot for this one. This is definitely a club tame. So once you have whacked this thing with a club, then it is just as simple as feeding it a bit of meat and you've got yourself a flyer, which is really an essential thing in Ark. The only thing is its saddle is a little bit on the expensive side than what you may be used to. It is unlocked at level 38 and you may not have chitin or keratin readily available to you. For that you'll need to kill any kind of insects or actually the carb enemies which was the creature that was on the list just before the pteranodon. In terms of my PvP audience as well, the Pteranodon has a use there as well. It's not just a great PvE creature. The Pteranodon's PvP uses include these things are actually pretty good for raiding bases and scouting areas as well, as they are one of Ark's fastest flyers, which means you can quickly get out of any situation quickly, and their sea attack spin ability is really useful for raiding bases. In at number 3 is the Baryonyx. The Baryonyx is definitely an essential arc tame that every player needs and I urge every player to actually tame one of these things as they are so useful for pretty much everything on arc. Firstly, the Baryonyx is just such a good carnivore and it is definitely worth it. Its health is relatively high, it's got a good stamina stat which is really really welcome and its damage is definitely something to not overlook it can easily plow through a lot of creatures in arc and a good high level one would probably be able to take something out like a titanosaur or a giga or a carcarodontosaurus but maybe don't take these things into bosses as although their health stat is still really good it is not really going to stack up in some boss fights especially something like the dragon on the island or the master controller on genesis part one also the baryonyx's main use 
it's definitely its main use is is an absolutely insane caving creature and with its sea attack spin ability and water this thing is definitely a viable creature for doing underwater caves as well which on the island there are two and actually this makes this thing a great underwater creature as well far better than the carb enemies it is a little bit harder to tame but with a net gun if you do have access to that these things really aren't that bad and with a simple trap they're not bad either but compared to the carb enemies these things can stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon they can actually fight back and they deal a reasonable amount of damage and they are a lot faster than the carb enemies and if you have been with the carb enemies for a little bit you know they are a little bit on the slow side in at number two is the Deinonychus. Now this is the first tier on the list that you don't even need any trank arrows to raise this thing. You're simply going to need your hands, which you already spawn with in Ark, and probably a couple campfires. And you may ask, why do I need campfires for a tame? What is that even going to do? Well, actually, you don't tame this thing really per se. You actually find its eggs in the wild, simply steal it, and then raise it, which is where the campfires will come in. And then you may need some resources to go through imprinting, but it is not necessary for its tame. Now, the Deinonychus, unlike the Baryonyx, is a really great boss tame. And it probably isn't that bad for caves as well, except sometimes it is a little bit too wide. I know it doesn't seem like it would be, but sometimes it is a bit wide to fit into those tighter areas of caves. Now the Deinonychus is definitely a pack creature, and it will benefit from that pack buff like so many other arc creatures have. For example, the Allosaurus uses that same buff as well, and it will just buff all of the creatures that are in the pack. The minimum number of dinos in a pack, if you didn't know already, is three. Also, once you have yourself a good pair of male and female Deinonychuses, you can simply breed these things, and you never have to steal another egg again. And also, these things are great for doing boss fights as their bleed ability actually carries into the boss fight which is op and finally in at number one is the reaper now you may think what the hell this is not the easiest creature to tame in arc that is actually worth taming why is this thing in number one and in fact if you're on operation that would be precisely right these things are definitely not an easy tame on aberration but on genesis part 2 these things are a tame which can literally be your first tame and that isn't because the taming method is easier you still have to take these things to under a thousand health and then get impregnated by them but the way you can deal that damage is so much easier on genesis part 2 and since you have the tech suit readily available to you, you can quickly get out of the way once you have been impregnated and while luring the actual reaper into the toxic gas, which will actually deal the damage to the reaper queen, which will allow you to tame it with so much ease. Sadly, this is only accessible on Genesis Part 2. And if you don't have that, you will not have access to the reaper unless you have Arboration or if you just don't have any DLC at all. But the thing is, the Reaper is just so, so good of a tame. It was definitely worth putting this thing on the list. And if you do want to know about this taming method, go check out Raj Clark's guide. But anyway, that is the end of today's video. And I really hope that you enjoyed. Also, comment your top five in the description down below and tell me will you try out that reaper taming method and i'll see you all later bye